today we're gonna do another all metal J head rebuild this one was actually less than 10 US dollars shipped to my door and for the money the quality is pretty good I've seen people pay ten dollars for a nozzle uh, or more these are actually not that bad but they do need a little bit of a rework first thing I do is I usually disassemble these people that think they can buy this cheap stuff and uh, just mount it in are sorely mistaken there's a Bowden type and I actually rather really like these connectors in the back I've loosened this one up but these are really really good connectors and um, the heat break is actually or I should say the heat sink is not a bad deal either um, where these things really fall down is actually the heat break internal heat break and the heat break on these things a lot of times contains a teflon liner which is dandy if you want to print PLA but not really all that great for ABS and the teflon liner is usually some oddball shape or size or whatever and my guess is the reason they did this is because they want to use the three millimeter heat breaks and they just use the teflon liner as a reducer I have no interest in using a teflon liner whatsoever but I do like to dis disassemble these completely before I put them to use so a couple of set screws on the side one holds a heat break the other one holds the nozzle there's another set screw here that holds the heating cartridge uh, there is no set screw on this type for the actual thermal sensor which is all fine you know what you ordered this one happens to have a half mil nozzle on it and this is the block it's not bad it's not badly machined it's not a bad piece there's plenty of thermal mass here but this part I really don't like so I ended up buying a bunch of these bought five of them for about six dollars ship and uh, these are all solid stainless heat brakes problem is this is a two millimeter drill bit at least the shank is and it doesn't fit smoothly all the way through that means that the machining is uh, there's something to be desired as far as the bore smoothness one of the things that I really like to do is to ensure that the bore is smooth um, one of the problems with these is you you don't necessarily have to have a perfectly two millimeter um, heat break but it has to be smooth otherwise it's gonna jam so what I do is I use these um, high-speed drill bits and use that to sort of polish this and when I do that it's simply run it through There's some crud in there but it's not even close to being polished just yet next I'll show you how I polish them what I do next is I take these drill bits I measure out the shank 1.97 1.99 um, mil so this is close to 2 mil and that's perfect for this what I do is I first mount it in my rotary tool here this is not one of those ultra high RPM rotary tools but certainly much higher RPM than a drill and give it a spin good enough and I use a full hand drill to actually clear out the big stuff and then the small stuff with this which is all fine and dandy then what I do is I have here my favorite lapping compound uh, 
you use this every day it's called toothpaste it's it's good enough to lap the interior of these and it laps it pretty well what you're trying to do is really trying to get rid of the rough surfaces and it gives your thermal brake a nice minty smell and take a look at it against the light it's fairly smooth it's not mirror polished but fairly smooth and as you can see the actual drill bit is leaving residue that means it works when it leaves um, metal residue it means that it's abrasive enough to polish the metal run this back and forth a few times so on and so forth it's very phallic movement but it works well if you can see inside the thermal brake it's actually fairly well polished that way After much polishing, you get a fairly smooth barrel or thermal brake. These are actually fairly decently machined and it's not too thin here because that's the part where people usually break their thermal brakes. And again, for what I paid for the hot end is what people are paying for a single thermal brake which is not saying that it's a bad deal that way but I'm kind of a cheapskate so I'm gonna polish my own and take it from there and this should be good enough to put together now I'll show you how I put these together the next part up is I take a tap M6 tap don't forget your metric taps and uh, chase all the thread over in there make sure it's an M6 tap you don't want to go any bigger or smaller but you really want to chase the threads for the simple reason that sometimes they're not all that clean and we don't want to introduce any sort of aluminum when we put this thing together so it's just to clean it up. That's the heater block. You can put some grease on the tap. I personally don't need to. Don't want to. Because I'm I'm just chasing a thread. So the rest of it. This all these parts are gonna get washed before I put them together. and that cleans up the thread nicely next up we want to clean up the thread on the actual heatsink and it's soft aluminum don't go too crazy on it but you want to tap it all the way to the bottom of it the fact is these are not tapped all the way so you leave a bit of a space because the original thermal brake has the bottom machined out so we want to go in there as close as possible and reduce that size to do that it's simple just tap knock it off keep adding keep at it slowly but surely you'll get to the bottom of it done this before and it's worked out fairly well again you need a little bit of hand strength don't be afraid to use pliers on this part it's not all that fragile so I'll get on tapping with this and let you guys know one thing I forgot to mention is when you're tapping this when when you feel it start to bite 
go about half a turn back it up half a turn go back there and chase it down after about one full turn back it up all the way and knock out all dust this is what I picked off from this you don't want to mess up the thread in there you want to just clean it and tap the rest of the way through um, the main thing is you got to go slow go really slow and once you're done you should be able to take one of these thermal brakes and hand screw it all the way down to the point where the shoulder where it's been machined off is actually zoom uh, focus focus is actually flush with the bottom of the heat sink that gives you a proper seat as well as a uh, very low possibility of um, film and jamming up there next up we gotta make sure that the two mil hole here is smooth as well and this is what I do I take that same high speed bit and I run it back and forth this aluminum is very soft and uh, it'll drill that with no problems again I take a little bit of toothpaste doesn't have to be a lot and again you wash the stuff afterwards so toothpaste is designed to be soluble in water and you're polishing the barrel at that point you're also ensuring a perfectly smooth transition it's a good thing to actually screw this in to ensure that the transition between the aluminum and the stainless is one piece this ensures that it's completely one piece if you go through the other side of it it'll be nice and clean next up putting the rest of this together one more thing I wanted to mention is once you rinse these make sure you dry out the threads uh, it will reduce the chance of galvanic corrosion things like that because the aluminum is basically bare there so any moisture will speed that up I suspect it'll happen with just about any hot end because even if they anodize the actual thread once you screw something like a stainless steel heat break in there it's most likely gonna scratch it so you can start there too I've had the anodized parts on other applications go bad don't leave any fibers of uh, tissue or cloth or anything like that in there just be careful with it and now I have a proper heat break I should say heat sink I have a proper thermal break that has already been washed and cleaned and I leave these here the heater block there's not much to it just chase the thread make sure it's clean the set screw in the bottom should be on the bottom like so next up we want to drill make sure that the orifice on this is the exact size you want it to be and the way I do that is I actually mount this on the drill I take one of my in this case half mil drill bits and I spin this while holding the bit with my hand you gotta be careful but if you're careful enough you can actually drill this at higher speeds and it'll be fine it'll be perfectly fine I've, I have other half mil drill uh, orifices um, nozzles there we go that's the right word I have other nozzles like this that are half mil and uh, I, I simply clean them even when they clogged I clean them one of the reasons why I really like to clean these nozzles is simply put they always leave crap in there 
so it's good to just clean it up I even take a two mil drill bit from behind and I just clean it up very very light after cleaning so on and so forth I put this together tighten the set screws solid piece again now it's the next part is the Bowden setup um, these fittings are actually really really nice they grip the tubing really well and they usually they have a pretty tough spring on them so it's uh, you can put a little spacer in there and it locks it in perfectly the thing is this doesn't go all the way to the bottom of this and I you could leave that without but I actually like to fill in the rest and the way I do that is I take my caliper I run the little tail stock of the caliper in and I get about 10 mil see I know this bottoms out all the way on the threads and I get about 7 mil deep so I have about 3 mils left but there's a recess here which is about 2 mil, 2.5 two mil so what I do is I cut this tubing over here which is 6 mil and fits in this recess perfectly and uh, 2 mil plus 3, 5 mil that's what I need, I need about a 5 millimeter chunk of this so I measure out with my calipers and it has to be approximate I mean this is plastic after all and then it does have some give but that's the first part of it we got a six mil wide five mil long chunk of tubing that fits in here rather nicely see the next up is I take this four mil two mil ID tubing which is just a chunk of my old Bowden setup and I run it here and I bottom it out and I cut it just a little bit longer than that maybe one mil more I do that and it's cut easy peasy color squeezy take this screw it in and finish the job take my old set of ancient pliers here tighten this up not too much again this is aluminum you want to be gentle with it I run the back of the drill bit through it just to see if there's any sort of friction and actually there is um, what happens is when you tighten this up the actual um, Teflon tubing deforms and uh, it takes a little bit time so what I do is I run the drill bit back and forth just to clear that out and it seems like I've spent the entire video drilling but the main thing is we want to make sure that the Teflon is not a hindrance the 1.8 mil um, filament should go here very smoothly without any restriction all the way to the heat break where it gets melted and then gets extruded that's the secret to actually getting a clog free hot end uh, a lot of these hot ends they have mismatched parts they have gaps so on and so forth and those gaps is what kills the performance of these they're actually not that bad of a hot end it's just you know I would pay three times the price if they could machine it properly but they can't so I do it myself again simple hand tools you can make this thing work alrighty see you on the flip side please subscribe